1997, Britain ceded Hong Kong to China. After an agreement was made by China and Britain at the end of the Opium War, they signed a mutual agreement that China would not change laws in Hong Kong for 50 years. Since then, China has been breaking the, that agreement and has been changing the laws. Here is a little explanation of the Opium War so you can understand the backstory. China had something that Britain wanted, tea. Tea is an herb that didn't grow in Britain, but it sure did in China. So China was selling this to Britain, but would only accept silver. This caused Britain to almost run out of silver. So to make money, they were illegally selling opium to people in China to make silver for tea. When China found this out, this started a war known as the Opium War. After this war, China and Britain made an agreement to cede Hong Kong to Britain for 99 years. The government of Britain stated that 99 years was basically forever, stating that they never actually had intention of giving Hong Kong back. One example of China trying to change a major law is in 2014, the chief executive of Hong Kong, who at the time was Lung Chun Ying, tried to pass a law that would make it so Hong Kong would give some of their prisoners to China. It also stated that the courts in Hong Kong would follow the rules and regulations of Chinese courts. After mass protests consisting of hundreds of thousands of people, they decided to drop the law. Then, in 2019, the legislature brought back the law. After mass protests, the legislature decided to postpone the meeting. After about two months, they had another meeting. After about two hours of mass protests, the protesters broke into the executive building. They postponed the meeting again. A few weeks later, Lung Chun Ying officially announced they dropped the law and that he resigned. People in Hong Kong have been fed up with the recent actions made by the Chinese government, such as the censorship law. Now they have started to protest to win back their freedom of speech. In the initial start of the protest in 2014, it was an all-out riot. People were blocking the streets, breaking things, and vandalizing everything. This included a 79-day sit to block off roads, consisted of over 100,000 protesters. Police responded with mace, CS spray, batons, and water hoses with blue dye to represent police. Later turns out this dye was toxic. It is a law that police are able to attack until victim is no longer a threat. The police did not follow this law. This led to major injuries over the course of the protest. The name Umbrella Movement was coined because of the umbrellas used as shields to block off mace and pepper spray. At a fifth year reunion of the initial protest, protesters created many Lenin walls where they would put anti-government graffiti and other posters. The fifth year reunion was peaceful. Police still responded with water hoses and batons. One of the protest leaders was Alex Chow. Alex was a geography student at the University of California, Berkeley. He started le leading and organizing protests in the first wave of protests in 2014. He was a co-leader in 2019 and was arrested for involvement in anti-police protests. He was jailed for two months. He was arrested again in 2020 for unlawful assembly, and he's still serving his sentence. Nathan Law was another leader. He had he was head and founder of Dramista, which is a pro-democracy political party based in Hong Kong. He was elected to the position of legislator in 2017. After protests in 2020, he was forced to move to the UK and was granted political asylum. The Hong Kong police force issued a warrant for his arrest and it is still valid. Joshua Wong is one of the most well-known leaders of the movement. He has one of the biggest platforms in all of the protests. With a following of 700,000 on Twitter, which is run by his friends as he is currently in jail, but they are still able to get their word out with the account in the fight against China. He is a political leader and activist. He was arrested and given the same sentences as Alex Chow and is still serving his sentence. Currently, not much is happening. The government is still changing laws left and right, such as the No Secession Law, which was put in place in 2020, which made it illegal to talk about or succeed in China. In the summer of 2020, they also passed a censorship law. This law made it illegal to protest or show political support for any non-communist politician or movement. Shortly after it was passed, 10,000 people were arrested, including the leaders of, of the revolution. Even though it was illegal, Hundreds of pro-democracy uh, protesters came out to protest, but the protests have not had too much of an impact on the Chinese government so far. 
but the protesters are still trying to create better lives for their future generations.